Now I've been giving it some thought about the recent performance of the stock market. And I'm realizing also that I know a lot of new investors. Welcome back to my dad's channel. If you're new here, make sure to click that like button and subscribe and don't forget to share. Retail investing has reached an all-time high. I've said this before. But what exactly do those tickers mean when you look at your Robinhood, when you look at your stockpile, when you look at your Charles Schwab, your Fidelity, or your other brokerage accounts, or even your 401k? So we're gonna hit those one by one. So the very first one that everybody's always worried about is price. The price of a stock is always gonna be listed on a stock ticker. Now that price is manipulated by how much stock people are buying and selling. The more buyers you have, it's gonna drive the price up. The more sellers you have is going to drive the price down. So basically, that's all you need to know about that for right now. So on your market ticker, we've covered price. But one of the first things that you see on a stock ticker is something that called market capitalization, or it may be market cap, or it may be abbreviated M-A-R-C-A-P, and it will have the largest number on there. So when you hear people talking about Apple's a trillion dollar company, Amazon's a trillion dollar company, or this $800 million company, they're talking about the market capitalization. Now investment bankers, what they do is they take a company and they break it up into shares and then through market manipulation and buying and selling, those shares are assigned a price. So if we want to make it simple, your market cap is how much your company is worth based on how many shares you have. So if you have a company that has five available shares and each one of those shares is worth $1, your market capitalization for that company is $5. In keeping with our ticker, we're going to talk about another section that you'll see and I'm going to combine two of them. It's called the high and the low. Sometimes ticker will label them as today high, today low, intraday high, intraday low. Basically, you have to understand that Many people, many different people are buying and selling and doing transactions on the stock market. So the price of a stock actually fluctuates many different times throughout the course of a trading day and beyond. It's just something that you can't help. The price is just up and down. The only difference between stocks and other equities like homes and real estate is that this one you can actually see. But basically what they're trying to outline is, is for the trading day, which is normally between 9.30 a.m. Eastern, and four o'clock p.m. Eastern, they want you to know the highest that the stock got during the day and the lowest that it got during the day. And there's no real telling exactly what time those two things occurred. So now I covered daily high and low, but now the next term that we're gonna go to is the 52 week high and low. Now they normally don't talk about one year or uh, 365 days. A year is 52 weeks. So basically, by, it's pretty self-explanatory. They're gonna show you on your stock ticker within the last 52 weeks from the moment that you're checking is the highest the stock has been and the lowest the stock has been. Now, some people use technical indicators like this and they look at the graph of a stock over a couple of years to see if they can extrapolate a pattern. That's up to them and you may even wanna do that and that's totally up to you but I'm just here to deliver the terms to you so that they're not so mystical anymore. And with your stock education, the next term we come to on your stock ticker is volume. What is volume? Volume is simply every transaction of a company's stock in a given day. That's it. Whether it's a purchase, whether it's a sale, it doesn't matter. If someone transacts that stock, that goes as a transaction and that's listed as the volume. That is how volume is measured, is by transaction. Why is this important? Because some companies tend to be more volatile than others, meaning that there are way more transactions than other companies. If you have Berkshire Hathaway stock, for instance, Berkshire A shares that are six figures per share, they have way less volume than say Apple, which is less than $200 a share. I'm gonna continue your stock education. On a stock ticker, there's another category that you're gonna see, it's called average volume. It'll normally be abbreviated as AVG, VOL, or something to that effect. But the average volume is 
closely related to the volume where the volume is all the transactions in a single day the average volume is the average of all those transactions over a 90 day period so why would they include this normally you would see companies that will have extremely active trading days based on financial news that they put out there and maybe the next day not so much so it's easier to get a wider picture of how many people are trading this company back and forth if you do it per 90 day period because there are only four of those in a 52 week period and we all know that's how they measure their time now another term that you may see on a stock ticker this isn't always but it's one that you ought to know because you're also going to hear it as well once you start listening to financial news and reading some of the financial papers and that is EPS or earnings per share what this is is the amount of shares that a company has available or outstanding and the earnings divided by that number of shares so if you have a company that makes a thousand dollars for let's call it a lemonade stand our lemonade stand makes a thousand dollars and we have 10 shares out there we have earned a hundred dollars per share which gives us our EPS now this EPS is actually related to other metrics that I will cover later but this is definitely one you ought to know now on the stock ticker we're getting towards the end so don't worry I'm not gonna be doing this all day but I will be giving you as much information as I can you're going to get to a term that is included on some stock tickers called PE or price to earnings ratio what that is is the price compared the price of a share of stock compared to how much they earned for that share of stock or EPS which we've covered before so what does that mean to you you'll often hear a PE ratio referred to as a multiplier when you watch business news whether it's Fox Business News CNBC Bloomberg News it doesn't matter you'll hear that word multiplier and that basically in layman's terms price to earnings ratio is how much money you're paying for every dollar this company earns now that'll give you a good idea on how price intensive a company is to earn and it may influence some of your decisions on how to buy them especially if it's not in line with the sector that they're in we are going to round out your stock ticker education series with the last metrics that is normally included on a stock ticker I'm not going to cover any more because I don't want to go too far ahead but the last one is your dividend yield now you'll see this as a div it'll be uh, abbreviated or annual it, it, it will be abbreviated because what they'll do is they will take a stock and they will measure its dividend yield on an annual basis as an example we're gonna keep the math nice and simple here if you have a stock that's trading at hundred dollars and they have a five percent dividend yield and they pay a dividend every three months that means every three months they are paying a dollar and 25 cents dollar and 25 cents times four gets you five dollars or your five percent dividend yield now they don't put the percent sign on there so a lot of people tend to confuse the number with how much of a dividend they pay but it's a common misconception understand that that yield is a percentage an annual percentage of the current stock price which means it can fluctuate as the stock price fluctuates I just thought you should know that and that rounds out our stock ticker education.